this week's adventure. Come on, let's go. Hi, I'm Vicky, the carpenter's daughter. Welcome back to our little farm. Last week I showed you how I installed a security system around the house, a ring security. As unpopular or popular that might have been, we actually caught some footage yesterday morning of a deer just walking around gingerly. I don't know if it had lost anything, but I'll show you that clip now. And I had a few comments saying, there goes your plans for growing vegetables. I might have to put fencing or netting around it. I've been online, apparently they do eat it if they're starving. We are surrounded by loads of farmland. Hopefully this is their last resort. But what I've done is I've used our two and a half ton delivery of soil improver last week. I mixed it with another supply that I got and I'll show you what I use that for and that is to grow potatoes in bags along this fence. I've got some first earlies here and a main crop there. Now, it's March. It might not be the time to do it in your book, but I'm having a go. It's been quite a few years since I've done this. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I did take your advice and I bought a Charles Dowding calendar, sewing calendar, and I've put it on my wall and I'm gonna follow the dates from now on. And I like those out of the way there because I don't want to use all of my new raised beds just for potatoes. I want to grow things that are more exciting. Different varieties of cauliflowers, broccolis, pak choys, things that I eat more of. I don't eat many potatoes, but it's nice to have a staple and it should taste nicer than the supermarket. And since I showed these on video, we've got these placed where we want them. I've also got a garden growing veg planner that I've signed up to planning where they're gonna go seasonally. Hands, <laughs> you better not be jumping or pooing on my crops. Also, there's a space here to add more and maybe today or tomorrow, we'll be taking your advice, positioning our baths that we've got and we'll be using those for carrots for the depth. But there's one thing we need to do before we fill them and that's get them level and stake them in. Then we're gonna take your advice and we're gonna use branches and logs to fill the bases after we've put cardboard down so just to suppress any possible weeds we know this is a clean area and then start putting the compost mix that we've got and it should save money so as you can see i've got loads of branches to hide in these beds but we've also been sorting them with brambles over there this is stuff i really didn't want to show on video it would have just been so boring to watch and it's time consuming and this is our other unprocessed branch pile. So I think we'll probably be taking your advice now, hiring a six inch branch chipper. And we've got loads and loads over there, so many. But we know this pile's gonna get worse because of this week's challenge over here. Now this might not look like much to you because it's just full of trees and brambles and the brambles were a lot worse than this just to clear that back fence. But if you look close enough, there's ivy running all the way along a unit. It's like a, a lorry unit. In fact, you'll see what it used to be on the other side. So it's on stilts. It might even be a concrete base under here because we found out this is, it's full of pony manure, rotted manure. We will be using these in the beds. We'll be mixing it all together. So to be honest, I think we're gonna be golden for growing veg, apart from those badgers and foxes. But we've heard a few different stories about what's in here. We've heard that the previous owners were market traders and that there were gowns and things. Then I've heard there were loads of toys. So the latest that we've heard is that the previous owners allowed one of the neighbors to store things in here while they moved into a care home. And apparently the stuff in here never came out. Now, why is this important? Because apparently it's all old antiques expensive things, that's the word on the street anyway. So I am dying to chop these trees down today, 
clear it, get in there, find out what it is. If we find some treasure, hopefully we can sell it on, buy more seeds, maybe an extension. Now you might be wondering if these are connected to it. These are just on the back end. We've walked around them looking for entrances. There's nothing. It's just lean-to buildings. Also, we were showing a relative around here the other week. They'd never seen this place before. And there was a dead baby deer down here. It looked so cute. But when we came back the next day to remove it, it had gone. I think maybe a badger had taken it or something. But yeah, there's more manure in here. In fact, the unit to the right of this looks like it used to be chicken coops. Everything's rotten in here, by the way. Even these, these wooden, I mean, it's just woodworm everywhere. That's moist and damp. So I might end up reusing all this metal, perhaps for a compost pile, and maybe even replace this for a workshop because it's all a concrete base. This is probably perfect for me to work around. And I got attacked by a bird the other week, again. I wouldn't mind uh, replicating this little stool. That's cute. That's a nice, easy design to copy. And if you can see this sagging paintwork here, I came through here a few weeks ago, it was quite dark, and a bird was obviously nesting in there and it went for my neck and I ran out as quickly as I could. It was a beautiful coloured thing, but there's not a lot in here. It might be in somewhere for ponies to hide, but this is the back end of that unit again. So we've pretty much come full circle where I started talking to you. We've got bags and bags of brambles, old grass clippings that we can use as mulch, an old fire pit that was in the middle, so maybe we could filter that and use the ash for, um, for the compost. And we've been trying to clear out these greenhouses. Now this is the bigger and better one, just some glass panels that need to be replaced. It is dirty and we can both walk around in it. Apart from that one, not only has it got glass missing, we need to strengthen it because the, uh, the metal has gone in the wrong direction. Maybe we get rid of that one. It all depends on how many tomato seedlings that we've got. But I have got loads of seedlings that I've grown. I've also got many that haven't. They've not done anything, but they've been trying to grow for about two weeks. I do like the pavers as bases. And another reason we might get rid of that one is because there might not be enough room to try and wheel out this boat. And I really want to do that next week as well, remove it. And there's a tow bar there, whether it's seaworthy, that is the big question. And the reason we want to try and find a new home for that is because it's blocking a load of light over there. And this is going to be hopefully perfect growing space as well, because I've realized I'm trying to grow a lot of seeds and I've already filled the raised beds that I've made on some plans that I've done. So to remove these trees, you might have thought we'd be using our new works pole chainsaw to go with our grass trimmer because it's got lots of attachments. Well, we found out yesterday that the bolt on it to tighten the chain has completely stripped. There's no thread left on it anymore. So unfortunately, we're gonna to have to send that back and resort to my still GTA 26. This was gifted a couple of years ago, but the charge will last probably about 15 minutes to half an hour. We've also borrowed my dad's Ryobi petrol chainsaw. And after a few cuts, I think the chain is sharpening because it became quite an effort but if you can see over there we managed to cut that tree there but obviously we've still got a lot of cleanup to do so we're going to use this and during periods of charge we might have to use a handsaw and there's a little crack in the door teasing me here and the fact that it's been propped up with some wood tells me it might be easy to open because I was worried I'd have to WD-40 the hinges like crazy I'm going to go get my gloves on my PPE let's get cut in in fact, scrap that. The first thing I'm gonna do is chop some brambles because they keep sticking to my jumper while I'm trying to cut stuff, which is really irritating. They are everywhere. To save battery life on my Stills mini chainsaw, I use loppers for the smaller branches and then move on to a handsaw so I can cut them down and organize them in bags. So now I've done a fair amount of cleaning for the brambles, I'm gonna start working on these branches, strip them from the actual trees and then work on the trees. They're just annoying so it's a bit more clear now so i'm going to start having a go cutting this thing down and hopefully it won't fall on my head it is blunt whoa need to get some more blades for that
Right. Timber! Oh, <laughs> we'll come down. Come on. It's all intertwined together. So before I carry on with my handsaw, I'm going to put this on charge and I can come back to this. God, these brambles. No, I'm really just trying to work out the best cut to do now, because once I trim this off, the lot will go. I'm starting on this side first, because when I do my final cuts on the other side, then I can push it away from me. Come on, you. Ooh. That's more like it. Why didn't I think about using my bow saw sooner? So after moving onto the bow saw last night, it started to get dark. And then when I went in, Mr. TCD came out and tried his last chance with the chainsaw. And this is the aftermath. I've got some logs to tidy up here. We're still having to separate branches from brambles. It's never ending. But this is our wood chip pile. It's taller than me now. And our bramble pile, which we're probably gonna be burning and we've already filled another three bags but before I even go into that barn I've promised myself to do some clearing up first before I just go in there and just forget about this mess because that is what would normally have happened and I'm sure you can agree it's looking so much clearer now and we can actually see the other outbuilding from our kitchen which is really weird <laughs> and just to give you a recap this is how the area looked four months ago in autumn shortly after us moving in so many things were hidden away that we weren't even aware of. And after we've tidied up a bit, I'm gonna make a little bit more mess because I want to use the hedge trimmer on there. I couldn't use it yesterday because it was being used. What is in there? So I've cleared as much as I'm prepared to. This feels like waiting for exam results, but more like, are we winning the lottery or just back to square one? Obviously I fancy some treasure, not some crap I've got to dispose of. Why am I nervous? I think it's because I've worked about two days to find out what's in here. Right, I've got a torch, I've got gloves, and I've also got my phone on as well, so I can try and capture anything. I don't even know if we can open it. Okay, there's lots of brambles all over the floor. I see some sort of rack. Oh, it's smelly. There's a hat. Oh my God, it's tough. <laughs> it might even fall off. Oh my God. It's full of stuff. People were not lying, whoa. I don't know where to start. This is not a five minute job, is it? You know what? We were told they were market traders. I can sell some of these. <laughs> There's loads of hair bands. Hats galore. There's a money tin. A money tin. There can't be anything in there. Stereos. Furniture, what's that? Cushion step, like for flooring or something. If you look here, it's definitely signs of a market trader. So there's a lot of their own stuff in here and absolutely tons of buttons. There's loads in front of the stables, mirrors. This is probably furniture that was in next door's house. Jewel trimmings limited. Buttons, buttons. 
Is that buttons? 35 Lay Street, Dunkirk, Nottingham, NG7, dual trimmings. I hate to say it though, I don't think we've got time in this week's video to go through all of this stuff. I didn't realise how much stuff would be in here. Roll, rolls of fabric. I will use rolls and rolls and rolls and fabric. There's loads. Oh, what? There's drop-ins. Oh. I thought this was a bag of rubbish on the floor. And we did hear about some kids that used to come here and visit. They would dress up in gowns. Wow. Oh God, I thought this was a whole sofa stacked up on there, but it's not. Just rolls and rolls of fabric. Now, once we've emptied this, what would you actually use it for? Would you use it as a workshop? I'm fascinated. And what is this? Is this just to store fabric rolls and put it out? I don't know. We've got clothes rails. Oh, hat after hat after hat. Oh God, where, where do you start? Oh, zips. What's down there? Stereo. There's two Hoovers. Uh, look, I should set up um, a Facebook marketplace or something for old vintage buttons. If you want to buy some vintage buttons, let me know. Oh God. Moth, I think. I, uh, what do you want to do? Don't tell me they're Y fronts. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Oh, that, these might be that man's boxer shorts. What's under here? There's loads and loads of merch. That looks like a mouse has been, um, yeah, can you see? There's a mouse been sh ripping it up. What's this? I found a purse. A stamp? It feels heavy. I found coins. <laughs> What's quite depressing is this is still valid. <laughs> but it's only two Ps. Add that to the list of 28 pounds that we found when we first moved in. No, no notes, but they wouldn't be valid now, I bet. Oh, we have to get all of this stuff out. Oh, what's that? I don't know what you do with all this stuff. It seems a shame just to throw it away if somebody can make use out of some of it. Rugs and carpets. There's a cord. Oh my God, it's one of those um, heat, Serving heat things, you know, you serve your food and you keep it hot. It just goes on and on. Leather gloves, overlock machine, yeah. lace fabric. If you've got any ideas what you do with all of this stuff, whether you try and salvage it or not, let me know. I am a hoarder and I don't like getting rid of things, but I know that I can see droppings all around and it does stink. Or we take a lot of these fabrics to those weighing places and get our pennies worth. Lots of kids' clothes. It was never going to last out here. No, I can't get to it. And we need to close it as much as possible. <gasps> oh! <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to be a millionaire anytime soon, but I can't get to any of the stuff at the back. Not this week anyway. Let's just hope we find a pocket watch that's worth millions like Del Boy found. No. That, it does not want to shut anymore. It's because those brambles are in the way. So this week, I definitely learned not to get your hopes up on random containers that are in your back garden that are very, very unlikely to have anything precious in them. But I was very impressed how watertight it was, apart from the obvious door that won't close properly. And it was nice and bright in there with the transparent roof panels. So. I think that would actually convert into something really cool, like a garden room, a potting shed, or maybe a garden office if it was well insulated. If you've got any ideas though, please let me know. Especially if there were doors and windows on that side with that awesome paddock view. There is a slight lean on the left-hand side, but that's where all of the stuff is. I don't know whether it's concrete underneath or it's just sinking into the soil. I won't know until I start investigating. But hopefully you've got some kind of entertainment out of my disappointment, but at least it's another job ticked off my list. But once we've got that pole saw replaced, I think the next job I want to try and do is reveal that 
boat over there. Anyway, that's for next time. Catch you in my next one. Bye.